so on my dear loving devotees and greedy hearers of Srila Prema Bhakti Janrika. I lovingly send my pranams and thank you for coming and listening together with me because your ears are also my ears. We are connected in that loving thirst and that is our good luck. And today I want to continue the flow of love that we had yesterday when we were listening Vilap Kushmanjali in connection to Chaitanya Charitamrita. All the quotes that were in the commentary of Ananda Das Babaji Maharaj, they were like highlighted and also deepened by understanding of Vilapakush, um, Chaitanya Chaitamrita quotes. So our conclusion yesterday was, what is the quality of the maidservant? What was Raghunath Das Goswami's behavior? What is his motivation? How he is doing his uh, eagerly, you know, vilap? So, the sentence that was coming out like the jewel yesterday and that we repeated in the end again and again was exclusively, anxiously waiting. That is the, the duty of an of a aspiring maidservant, <laughs> one who wants to follow Rupa Goswami, and Raghunath Das Goswami. It is exclusively one-pointed on who I am in my spiritual form and who I want to be also in my sadhaka deha, in my consciousness, in my chitta, in my inner mind and heart. It's exclusively surrendering to Srimati Radhika's lotus feet and her dasis and anxiously waiting until they will give me their mercy. So that was the dress, this was the jewel, this was the... And uh, we were all very uh, happy and excited to, to listen, because as we know by listening, it will go deep. Listening makes it stick. -da -da -da. So, this verse, I, I was choosing this morning, I always try to go with this continuation of the flow of love or the flow of feelings. Naratom Das Thakur is praying, I will render loving devotional service in allegiance to them all, following them all, simply on their hints. I will understand what is my duty. I will always be passionately. That is the meaning of anuragi. Anurag is passion. But it is spiritual passion. It is eagerness. It is lopa. It is an unquenching thirst. And if the soul is lucky, she will feel it and it will continue to go deeper and deeper, this thirst. And when we are there with them, then we are passionately absorbed in their forms, in Radha and Mohan's forms and qualities while residing amongst them, the Sakis. So that's the prayer for loving service. And that's also our, our goal, our heart's deepest desire. And also one thing came yesterday when Gurudev was, we were saying exclusively, anxiously waiting. So it's waiting, it's not doing. That is also a very important point. Because waiting means waiting. <laughs> we cannot do it. We can be there, we can be in our, our, our homework, we have to do. That is another story. But to be accepted in the circle of the Dasis, we are waiting for that and we are hoping and praying for that. 
And we need to grow into that. And then and my number will come. Radhe, yes, Sachinandan Paya, I'm waiting when my number will come. I have to taken a token. Huh? My Gurudev has given me a token. So now you're a Dasi. And then waiting for the number. When they will call me. When they will call me. <laughs> Thank you. Such a nice thing. My number. And then also Gurudev in between said, Don't change your dress. I want to put it, you know, up front. Because that was the, the loving, you know, sweet... Uh, Resume yesterday, it was like, it was like, wow, yeah, it's so easy, isn't it? But in the, in the other side, it also seems sometimes so difficult to wait until my number is coming. I'm sitting there, mm, do I have to do something? <laughs> and then in between, maybe I want to run away also. <laughs> Anxiously. Anxiously. Mm. A lot of feelings are coming with anxiously. I need yeah, to slowly, slowly with your Holy Vaishnava's mercy. I am very eager to listen to every class. Slowly, slowly, my heart is <laughs> going in it. And... Sachin Nanabaya, you are blessing us. We are so lucky that your love no, for no, us no. is so great that you are blessing us with your, you know, loving words. And... No, no, really, I am understanding slowly, slowly that why all these happening, this all classes, why many people are inside and going. There is some deep meaning. So I also take a dive inside and try to see through the putting one glass that makes the water clear to see through it. Then I'm trying. This is all of your mercy. I am nothing actually. I am nothing. I'm not knowing. But these two great books you people are reading. I'm 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 nowhere in this discussion or conversation. I'm just listening through my ears and I'm trying to understand. And with this try, understanding, I'm trying to churning inside something that maybe, but it it all it only can happen after Gurudev mercy, not before that. So I'm first I'm waiting for Gurudev mercy with listening. I'm listening, but that sometime foolish mind jump inside and say something. So please forgive me. I'm not qualified to say anything regarding all these things. What you people are very highest level of books you were reading in this uh, uh, this is true i am nowhere actually but yeah it's inspired it's inspiring definitely and uh, it's it's giving a a boost to understand and to become a at least a first a good person good human being then trying to be, become become a good devotee and then slowly slowly other process to become Manjari is very far away for me. I'm just listening. I'm very happy to see all Manjaris. Like I'm a, just sitting at my door a step in at my house and looking. The other children are how nicely dressed and going where they are going. They are going to school for study. So this I am doing right now. I'm just <laughs> looking and watching and I'm just thinking over it. I'm not doing anything and I am not qualified. I have not that kind of endeavor or caliber. To do anything. What little bit I am doing over living here at Mungair Mandir, mercy of Gurudev and mercy of Radhaman and mercy of all of your Vaishnavas. That's it. Thank you. Wow, thank you. So sweet. Yes, we are all these uh, little girls that also want to go in the school, in the Anugatya of the Sakis, of the Mandris, of the Kinkaris, of that sweet girls that come by our houses so beautifully dressed. You are right. And if you are nowhere, then I just want to follow you into that, you know, service of Sri Radha Mohan that you are doing so nicely. Thank you and always please uh, jump in when you feel like it. Any one of you, I always like to listen, listen that, what you feel and what you express. So passionately absorbed, so passionately, that is making a dress. Because the gopis, they wear a dress of passion. This anurag, it is the result of all their prayers, all their endeavors, all their heart's desires. So that anurag is a dress and it's a passion, a loving passion 
to serve Radha and Mohan, serving their forms and qualities while residing amongst the Brajabhasis, the Sakis. So that's what Gurudev said yesterday also, as a reminder, don't change your dress. Stay in that meditation all day long, 24-7. You might lose your dress in between and you're again in trousers <laughs> for some reason because we are used to wear the trousers. But actually, we have a beautiful dress, a beautiful, beautiful dress. And also, this will be explained in the purport. In this Tripadi, Srila <coughs> Thakko Mahashai reveals his aspiration for attaining the loving service in the wake in the following of the Nitya Siddha Mandaris and the consequent qualification. First of all, he says, Esap Anuga Hoya Prema Seva Nivo Jaya Ingite Bujivo Sabakach Braj Bhajan cannot reach city without one following in the footsteps of the Nitya Siddha Ragatmika Pashadas, the eternally perfect associates of Krishna. Now comes a quote of Chaitanya Charitamrita. Raga mai bhaktir hoi ragatmika nam tahashuni lupta hoi kon bhagyavan lobe braja basi bhave kore anugati. Devotion full of spiritual attachment is called ragatmika bhakti. If a fortunate soul becomes greedy after that, he will start following the people of Braj. He will start looking, what are they doing? Where they are going? How are they dressed? How do they speak? What do they eat? They are looking, we are looking into details now. It's not a general understanding of, I want to be a devotee. God is great, I am small, I am a servant. It becomes specific now. That's the meaning of Sambandha that we have gotten from our Gurdi. So if a fortunate soul becomes greedy after that, he will start following the people of Braj. By following the Braja Gopis, the sages of the Dandaka forest and the personified Vedas, became themselves Braja Gopis and attained the service of Radha and Krishna in Braj. But on the other hand, the goddess of Vaikuntha, Lakshmi Devi, could not attain Sri Krishna's company despite the fact that she lived in Braj and performed penances there. This is described in Srimad Bhagavat and other Puranas. In this connection, Sriman Mahaprabhu told Venkata Bhatta, All the personified Vedas follow the gopis and worship the son of the queen of Braj in their mood. When they attained a gopi body in another age, they could play the rasa dance with Krishna. Krishna is one or is of the cowherd caste, and the cowherd girls are his sweethearts. He will not accept or any goddesses or any other ladies. Lakshmi wanted to associate with Krishna, but she did not worship him in allegiance in following to the gopikas. She could not attain the rasa dance in another body. Therefore, Vyasadev spoke the verse Nayam Shriyo Nangayuni Tantarate Prasada in Bhagavatam, 10th canto. Yeah, that is also that story that we have heard many times when we also went on Parikrama 
with our Gurudev Narayan Maharaj, we go to Belvan, it's across the Yamuna, and there is this temple of Lakshmi Devi. And then we hear the story how she tried to be also in a closer relationship to Krishna because she had heard that this Leela on this planet Earth is so sweet and it's so glorious and it's very special. You know, Narayan is her husband, so she was curious also, who is this Krishna? He is also my Narayan, so what is he doing there? So she checked, she tried to check in, but then, you know, Yoga Maya and all the arrangements of the Prajbasis, they said, okay, you have to do this, you have to, you have to smear the houses with the cow dung, you have to touch the cow dung, you have to make a cow dung patty, and you press them to the wall of the hut, and there they have to uh, dry. And uh, she said, mm, I have to take the cow dung in my hand and put it to the walls. My God. No, no, you also decorate yourself with the cow dung. <laughs> she wants to be a Brahmani, right? She is identified with that. How can I touch this? This is a cow dung. This is only for the lower people. So Lakshmi Devi, she was not ready to follow. So we can already understand how lucky we are that we have a chance to follow. And we have to be able to touch the cow dung. <laughs> yes. So the blessed author says, following into the footsteps of Sri Rupa and other mandaris, I'm doing prema seva nibo chaya, which means from them I will accept the loving service of Sri Sri Radha Mohan. Here not just the word service has been used, but loving service. This has a special purpose. Love is the best ingredient for serving the Lord. If there is no love in the heart of the servant, the Lord cannot attain pleasure from the fruits, water or foodstuff offered by the devotee. So this is an uh, introduction. What does it mean to do loving service? How to, to get into that mood of Prema Seva? We have to be able to adopt the feelings and the moods of the cow-herded village in Vrindavan to be very simple and kind and sweet and innocent. So and then in the next, in the next uh, chapter of the purport, so to say, it is explained what is this Prema Seva? What, how is it attained? And it is again in that feeling of exclusively, anxiously waiting for that, hearing about that and, you know, trying to feel it, to come into the feelings and that means also to put on the dress, the dress of Anurag, the dress of this exchange of really deep love that has a thirst. It's not just a complacent love. Oh yes, I love you and you love me, you know, and you know the poem, Let Us Make a Family. <laughs> I love you, you love me, let me become part of the Brajbasi family. <laughs> that is the purpose and the, the goal that Baba wants to explain here. How is the love of the Brajbasis? And how we can attain this, you know, mercy of feeling like this. And he says, their love is just like the iron that's get being red hot in identification with the fire in which it is laid by the blacksmith. So again we have this red hot anurag. It's about hot. It's about high degree. It's about melting. The iron like steel framed heart has to be put into the fire in which it is laid by the blacksmith. So I was thinking, Jai Gurudev, 
I was thinking, who is that blacksmith? And I don't know, I would like to hear your feelings about that. And I will share my feelings, but I think it's a very interesting question. Who is that blacksmith that puts the our iron-like hearts, our covered beings into the fire of Prem, into the fire of the service of Srimati Radhika, into the fire of the feelings and service mood of Rupa Manjari, Rati Manjari, Ananda Manjari. Who wants to share on this? Anybody? You're smiling like the honeybees. You're smiling like the, you know, like the little children that know already what's going to be. So I think I will continue. I don't want to make you ashamed or something. Radhe Radhe, Mahbab, and Dayal Radhe. So I think that blacksmith must be Guru Manjari, right? She is putting my heart into that fire. She is, you know, giving me the chance to come close to her. When I am willing to follow and to go closer and closer and really, you know, put my heart at stake, means I'm offering my heart, my whole energy, my eagerness, my passion, then they will put it into the fire and it will be transformed. It will be hotter and it will become purified and it will melt. So... We are thankful that we found a very, very good blacksmith who takes our heart and makes the steel melt and it will be red and it will be full of passion for the service, for, you know, becoming qualified, becoming looked at for the Kripa Kataksh. And that's why it is called Prem Seva. It is not like any service that I choose. Oh, I want to do this. Oh, no, I don't want to do this. Do you have any other service for me? Can I choose? Do you have any numbers to choose from? No. It is putting the full heart in the fire, you know, in the full red fire of Anurag and Prem Seva. And that will result in always having the stress of Anurag. That's why, Gurudev, yesterday you said so nicely, and I'm still floating in that mood, in that bath. Don't change your dress. Stay in the fire of Prem Seva. Stay in the fire of Ranun Anurag. I have put you there. I want you to stay there. <laughs> stay there with me and let's melt together. So that Prem Seva can only be given or ask from the Nitya Siddha Kinkaris because Radha Mohan's Prem Seva is their own treasure. So we can see who is the blacksmith. In the end, it is Srimati Radhika and her Dasis. Who are the blacksmiths who are preparing the great fire and living in that great fire and inviting new and new Dasis? to also come and gift it from the treasure of their prey. So if someone has a big treasure, right, then they can be very uh, generous. And we are, what is our service? We are exclusively, anxiously waiting, putting on, on the dress of our hopes and desires in connection to the service of Srimati Radhika. Again, that Prem Seva is the treasure of the Nitya Siddha Kinkaris. And when they are so kind to bestow it upon a sadaka, then one is able to achieve it. exclusively, anxiously waiting. Mm. 
The words Prema Seva Nibhojaya indicate that the sadhaka's expertise in bhajan and the resultant loving eagerness are all there to invoke their grace. So it's, it cannot be anything ritualistic anymore. This bhajan, this practice, what we are doing our everyday endeavors for more feeling and more surrender and more depth and more f everything what we desired. These desires, they are not artificial. They, they will not remain on the artificial platform. They need to go deeper. The aspirations are also growing. And when the the aspirations or the desires are growing in intensity, then this anxiously will result. Anxiously means by hook or by crook, beg, borrow or steal. It's intense, condensed feelings which come by associating with those who have already intense, condensed feelings. It's also not something I can produce. I can cry for it anxiously and waiting until the heart, until the blacksmith will take the heart and put it into the hot fire of their own feelings. When it comes closer, it will melt and then the impressions, the samskaras will go deeper and deeper and deeper. So, and when, their, and when their grace will come through the anxious prayers, again, the eager Kinkari Bhava Sadakas must beg the loving service of Sri Radha Mohan from them, the Nitya Siddhas. They are also most merciful when they see the eagerness of such a qualified new maid servant, and they bless her with the proper devotional service. This is suggested with the words Prema Seva Nivo Chaiya. So also now in our lives now we are blessed with service. And that service is already a blessing. It doesn't come by chance. Any situation we are in, I feel it's already a blessing. We are doing what we can do, trying to be instruments of love only. In any situation, with any person we meet, in any difficult or also not, not so difficult situation, if the flow is a little bit more smooth, we will feel like we felt in our... Uh, two days ago we had the festival together with a lot of devotees and a lot of all over helpers and well wishing you know souls for the for the uh, love and action activities and save us prem prashad and all that we wanted to you know put ourselves into the fire of the saver the body was tired it didn't want to continue but we continue anyway because it was that our hearts were in the fire of love we try to be in that anxious, eager, saver mode all the time. And it was a big blessing. It was, in the end, it was for the pleasure of Radha Mohan in all the bridge buses. And they allowed us. I was thinking, you know, how my stupid mind is so materialistic. Often I think that I help. But then when my, my consciousness becomes a little bit, uh, you know, more again <laughs> clarified, then I'm thinking, no, I am being helped. I get the chance to do service. I am blessed to do any kind of service, any kind of activity. This is my blessing. And, you know, another blessing and another blessing and another blessing. These are the intense what Gurudev, you always say, condensed feelings that will result from that. 
And that was really surprising. And then all of a sudden there is no more tiredness. And there is no more over-exhaustion. There is just like, I am ready, I am doing service. I'm a little bit gaga, I am a little bit over, you know, over... <laughs> My mind and my senses, they don't work so proper anymore. <laughs> yes, my capacity is overloaded. But then comes some other experience. Then it's like Shimati Radhika and Gurudev. They take over and they say, Don't worry, <laughs> I will do it. I am the doer, you are just the viewer. Don't worry, you are just the vehicle. I'm just using you. So just be at the disposal you know, just be there and, and watch everything. And then, Gurudev, you're working through our bodies and our minds and our hearts and we feel, again, very relieved and very happy. It's not a burden. It's a treasure of love. And then also now comes a very sweet point. Ingite Bujibu Sabakaj by Srimati Radharani's grace, the Kinkaris are able to understand the hints that she makes through any medium. So first of all, we want to follow and we are, you know, in the Anugatya, we are in the in the followship of the of the other Dasis. We are the shadows, right? We become instruments, we want to be an instrument, we try to be as empty as possible of all other impressions and desires. And then later, when this has happened and the blacksmith, Guru Manjari, has put the hearts into the fire of Anurag, then Srimati Radhika is teaching us more and more. I remember, Gurudev, you once said to me, I think last time I was in Radhavan, you said, okay, now you are here, but once we are there, you said, uh, it, it will be another chapter. It's like the learning starts again. The learning starts new. Then it will be a completely different uh, experience again. It's just like now it's a preparation <laughs> in a way. The consciousness is prepared and our meditations are focused and the feelings of stay like this. This is all a preparation for the big, for the big meal for the big feast, <laughs> for the big services. And that's when Sri Mata Radhika, <coughs> she is teaching her kinkaris also. Her glances, her words, her hands and feet. She is making different, different hints and that is a very subtle thing. It is not something easily understood. Only it can be uh, felt if we are very close to Srimati Radhika, like eye to eye, mouth to mouth, ear to ear, hand to hand, shadow-like. And Radha's maidservants are able to understand all of their Praneshwari's hints expressed through her glances and her words. They are also expert in all respects in understanding the hints given by the Sakis and the Manjaris headed by Sri Rupa. Their service is rendered in Parakya Madhuyaras and unless they understand all hints Rendering service will be impossible for them. So now we are trained by our dear most Guru Manjari that we can understand her hints. We are, we are trying, we are trying, we are sitting there. What she wants now, what, you know, what's my service now? And not asking. No, we have to know it before being asked. That's a higher, higher level. So when I was reading this verse this morning, I was thinking, wow, Krishna, he says in Bhagavad Gita 10.10, 10, I give you the buddhi to come to me. I give you buddhi yoga, right? Gurudev, 
You always quote this verse. But Shimati Radhika says, I give you Bhava Yoga. I give you the feelings, how you can come to me and serve me. <laughs> I thought that was so sweet, from Bodhi Yoga to Bhava Yoga. <laughs> So that is important to have this understanding of the feelings of this bhava, otherwise we cannot serve. Rendering service will be impossible. It's not that, you know, the kinkaris, they must be very quick. They are very small and very quick. They are quick to understand, quick to feel and quick to respond. And that without talking. It's a silent service. How Uddhava often uh, says so nicely, and also our um, Koranga Sundar is, is, is quoting this often. We are doing a lot of silent services, and that is the service through the eyes, through the glances, and through the gestures of many, many things. And even the words, they are so subtle, and they have different, different double meanings. And that is why Paraki above is so special. It requires a subtle intelligence that is made from Prem Seva uh, attitude, so to say. And that is the fire like Anuraga Passion that is exclusively in the service of Srimati Radhika. And that is anxiously exclusively waiting for this grace. Oh. Yes? Sachinandandaya, is that you? <laughs> so, then this comes this beautiful Leela in explanation of this uh, uh, how to get the hints and how to, you know, in any situation be quick and be very alert, very conscious, you know, it's like super consciousness, so to say. <laughs> Expert, not only when she is together with, with, with Krishna, with Mohan, with her beloved but also expert in catching Srimati's hints when she's at home. In the morning, Jatila enters Sri Radharani's bedroom to wake her up. Sometimes it's Jatila and sometimes it's Mukara. No? The mother also can come, the grandmother. Hearing the calls of her mother-in-law, Srimati, who is tired of her night nocturnal pastimes, wakes up and sits up in her bed. Ishaka Saki becomes afraid when she sees the signs of love making on Shimati's limbs. If that old lady sees it, everything is lost. Ishaka then gives a hint with her eyes to Shimati surrendered maidservants. And these maidservants, who understand each hint, will immediately conceal the signs with a cosmetic dye ungent with a cream. We could say also concealer. <laughs> That's how they are called in the cosmetic of this world. It's a good name. That's a Rasik name. <laughs> so, they put on the concealer and in this way, one needs to be expert in understanding all hints while rendering devotional service in Parakya Madhura Ras in Gitte Bojibo Sabakach. And then the next line, Rupe Guna Dagamagi, Sada Hobo Anuragi, Vasati Koribo Sakkimaj. I will always remain attached to and immersed 
in Sri Radha Mohan's Yugala Rupa. This means that I will always remain immersed in the sweet relish of the Yugala's ever fresh forms and attributes and in the sweetness of their devotional service. So means also for us in our sadhaka deyas, we try to remember during the day, oh, what is Radharani doing now? Oh, what is now her service and how can I connect to her in my daily activities when I'm cooking, when I'm picking flowers, when I'm in any kind of situation? How can I always see you, Swamini? Oh, please, Gurudev, Guru Mandri, help me. I'm so blind, I'm so ignorant, I'm so covered. It's not only my heart is made of steel, I feel my whole body is made of steel and I'm walking around like a tin person, you know, very stiff. But the mandaris, they are so small and so flexible and so movable. Ah, oh, let me be like that, always good. Please help me. All my brothers and sisters on the path, let us remind each other who we are, who we want to be in our eternal dresses. Let's always be in that, you know, sweet, loving mood with each other and with others. And if there's not happening, then let me quickly, quickly come back to that as much as I can every day. Another meaning is that by following the mandris, one becomes qualified to attain Prem Seva and expertise in performing all duties. So it's, it's not that I, I have to produce it. I just follow those who have already more uh, feelings and are more absorbed. That is the best way how to smoothly always be, even if I'm not, you know, connected. <laughs> I also need a concealer. <laughs> we are concealing our material desires, our material uh, samskaras, by putting on the unjient, you know, that cream of love, that prema balm. We're putting that on the eyes. We're putting it on the hearts. We're putting it wherever we can, you know, meditate like that. Oh, please, Gurudev, please, my Vaishnavas, help me to put the, the balm of love always in my eyes. Then I can see you, then I can feel you, then I can always be connected. The sadaka will then be immersed in the bodily beauty of a Radha Kinkari and in different attributes. Immersed in the attributes. It doesn't mean we have these attributes already, but we are immersed. So we know that from human psychology, we think about someone, we speak about someone. By doing that, we are making a bridge. So like thinking about the, the mandaris, thinking about uh, our sevas and of Gurudev and all our brothers and sisters, which we love very much, Think about them and then it will happen that the bridge is made in the heart. It will be more easy. And then we meditate on the different on their different attributes such as humility and good behavior. The Gaudiya Vaishnava Sadaka who has taken shelter of the path of bhakti, always thinks of themselves as someone with a very young body of a cowherd girl, which is decorated with different ornaments and is sprinkled with the honey of Shiguru's grace. Isn't that sweet? To always feel that I am sprinkled by the mercy and the love of my Gurte. This alone already gives so much uh, hope and so much um, inspiration. Newer and newer steps can be taken in that feeling. 
I'm already accepted. I'm already, uh, you know, in the process. Okay, I step down and I, I stumble and I become covered. That is a natural, my natural uh, position. It's my natural conditioning. I'm here in this material world and I try to be, I try to be a Darcy. It's not that I'm already 100% there only by getting initiated, only by getting Diksha, or even by getting my, my Bhava, Bhava uh, initiation, no? My Swarup initiation, even by getting all the Ekadasa Bhava's information, as long as it's not uh, realized, it can be only an information. Or like you often say, Gurudev, all these meditations, if we don't practice them and we just put that in our Almira, like in any kind of bookshelf, then it will be an, a, a, an information that can, you know, be covered at any time. It needs to be revived and re rediscovered or re-initiated any moment. <laughs> now, sometimes also we have heard that Devotees, they go and hear again and again the Diksha mantras to be revived. We need always to be online, to be updated, to have a, you know, updated online consciousness. And if it gets a little bit covered, then we just try to again revive it by coming together with others who are more online or which I feel very much attached and attracted to. And even if I have not the same feelings with all the different brothers and sisters, there are always some that will help me to feel again more online and to feel that, that sprinkled honey of Sri Guru's grace. It's always there. The sun is always shining, but the clouds are also very much <laughs> present, especially in these days here in Germany. We're having clouds all over. But then when the sun comes out again and the fog has dissolved the clouds, wow, the heart opens again. And that joy of the process of bhakti is revived again and again and again until it is completely ripe. Until the blacksmith is putting my heart there and I can let it happen. I can go through the fire of purification and I can feel the Prem Seva is coming. Little louder, somebody says. Oh, I'm sorry. Is it again not so loud? So the Gaudiya Vaishnava Sadaka, who has taken shelter of the path of Bhakti, always thinks of himself as someone with a very young body, adolescent, of a cowherd girl, which is adorned with different ornaments and is sprinkled with the honey of Shiguru's grace. Jai, oh my God, I got carried away. We have three more minutes. <laughs> oh, Radhi, my dear, oh my dears, please forgive me. I didn't hear from you. Anybody would like to share something on their feelings and that? You inspired me so much yesterday, Gauravani and Brata Sundari. I cannot stop flowing in that of your sharing yesterday. I just continue somehow. I try to continue in that same feelings that we had yesterday that were flowing so nicely. I was just thinking, what is it called? Iron Schmied? What was the word? Blacksmith, yeah, blacksmith. Blacksmith? Yes, <laughs> the blacksmith. We have only golden smiths. <laughs> yeah, this is what I want to make, actually, this point, that out of this molten iron, Gurudev, Guru Manjari, makes liquid gold. 
and then is filling this liquid gold in the form of the mandari or kinkari. And in this way, the form takes place in gold, not any more iron. Wow. It's gone. Yes. The so iron in this turns. way, Guru Manjari can make from iron gold. But first, the iron has to be molded. Like Suniti described so wonderful how it melts by being very close. And this can be outside, but this can be also inside. And actually it has to be inside in the end. You have to be very near to Guru Manjari. It's inside of this fire. So Suniti Didi, thank you for this yeah, very wonderful you. picture. You always inspire us. No, you inspire me, otherwise I cannot say anything. <laughs> you never know what to say. But we are also, you know, Gurudev has sprinkled the honey of his grace on all of us. And somehow he has given the gift and treasure of his praying through these Zooms and he's always there and he's listening even if he's, you know, in, uh, in day and in night, always there and always. We want to feel this. Oh, one quick thing I want to share because that question was raised on uh, Param Gurudev on uh, Radha Govinda Das Babaji's appearance day. Um, if I may quickly just add it, how we can feel someone like a Param Gurudev whom we have never met, whom we have never maybe seen or heard so much about, or maybe there are no books, if they are the Vajananandis or their time, there was not so much printing, you know, in the 1800s. And then I feel that in the same way as we have never met Srila Prabhupada, but we were so attracted. He was so beautifully introducing us to Bhagavad Gita, which was, of course, there already. And then, of course, with Radha Govinda Das Babaji, I feel, I am feeling him through you, through Gurudev. That's how I feel him. I cannot feel him by myself somehow. I feel it. I feel him through Gurudev. And that's how I build my relationship, and that's how I. I develop my my shraddha and my feelings and in my meditations. I I go like that. With Prabhupada it was the books because he would foresee that there were generations who would need some kind of sambandha with that. The books but if there's no books, then we have now the living Rasika Vaishnavas. Oh, my Gorasunna is helping. <laughs> Sashirade, so nice. Wow, what a beautiful point. And again, we make this point from his appearance day. Um, you know, there was one devotee, I think it was Gopinath, when he made this picture that in the moment of initiation, Gurudev said he put him in the hands of Param Guru. And this is so beautiful. And I at that point that now we, uh, we get a new history, new family line. It's no more the material bodily family line, but it's the uh, spiritual family line of uh, Gurudev. And if he puts us in the hand of his Guru, then uh, we get a new Opa. Dadu. Dadu. 
You know in Japan what is Opa? Grandfather. Grandfather. We say Opa. But actually, this is also a, a material understanding because uh, he was not Opa, he was Manjari. But if we accept this, that him as the Manjari as he was, then we get this connection. Because we accept ourselves by the mercy of Gurudev as a Manjari, and he connect us to the Manjari who make him Manjari. So in that way, we are related, same age, one day, say Gurudev, is only different, one day, but same age, and so in this it's easy to get a relationship to him, to our Param Gurudev, to his Manjari form, we get his name also, we, uh, by our own initiation, and we can meditate on his name and his form, his color, and so on and so on. His Kunja, where he is, and also our relationship that we get. And so he is waiting now that we will go in a relationship to him as his following. And we are really like his children, no? Because yes. Spiritual children. Because the spiritual master always thinks that everyone is sent to him by his guru. So we are called by Param Guru Dev to Guru Dev. And that is his, the service that he is doing or she is doing. So. And we know in the material world that the Opa is even more merciful than the father. The papa. The papa. <laughs> <laughs> the pita. <laughs> so, then we can imagine how happy he is for when we come closer to him and uh, we go in his relationship. Then not only our Gurudev is happy, but our Param Gurudev is happy because he will show us to his Guru. And that makes him very, very happy. <laughs> and so on. It becomes a great... They never come with empty hands. <laughs> Always bring a gift. You can imagine how many manjaris are in our family. It is a, a, it's, it's a gigantic family after uh, uh, so many generations. Every guru has disciples. Every disciple has disciples. And so on. No? So it's a big family we, uh, we uh, enter by the mercy of Guru Dev, by his initiation. So, <laughs> then I want to add to our Opa. Rade, Rade. Rade, Rade, thank you all for your, for your mercy and Guru Dev for your trickling, sprinkling us with the honey of Parabhu Dev's grace. Hope your pet is better soon. So today we are in big separation. Gurudev is not giving darshan, but oh. we are connected. We are feeling you, Gurudev. Thank you all and 